Just because you guys are you guys are talking to so many affiliate owners, gym owners, um, wh where do you guys see this whole thing going? Where do you see not CrossFit as a sport? I know you guys put a big thing out today on the season and all of that, but just the affiliate model and you know the benefits or disbenefits of being affiliated or even just having a a, yeah. a micro gym. Where do you guys see that whole thing going over the next couple of years? There are a lot of different avenues that this is going down so a couple of trends that are established number one is just keep on keeping on let's um you know the model worked previously to do a degree of profitability um we were okay with that and because um maybe other gyms in the neighborhood have closed we've actually grown our membership or or not just maybe gyms but maybe other non-crossfit or non-affiliate or non-functional gyms have closed and people are now kind of like Oh, that's cool. Like I could try that. They're open and getting fitness in is super important. So I can do that now. Um, we've seen a couple gyms that are doing that. So I think one pathway is just keep on keeping on, just doing what you're doing, try to maximize profit, trying to build up your cash banks and reserves and wait this thing out. Right. Let's just, just stay the course. Um, some gyms are closing and they're done. Right. And that's, that's super unfortunate, super sad, no matter who, who, who your affiliation lies with. It's just unfortunate to be the case. But economically, it's a tough environment. So there's gyms that are making that decision. San Francisco CrossFit, first affiliate in San Francisco, 15-year-old um, affiliate. They're like, we can't do nothing. Like our hands are completely tied and we're bleeding money. We're out. And they made a responsible decision, a difficult one. And I talked to those guys last week, Juliet and Kelly Sturette, and um, they laid it pretty clean. You know, just economically, it's unviable. San Jose CrossFit, the fourth ever affiliate in the world, closed its brick and mortar operation this week. They're going virtual only. They're going completely virtual. They're selling off the reserve equipment that they know they, know they no longer need, and they're probably selling it to members. Um, and uh, uh, now they're hosting virtual classes. So this is a new trend. This is something that's very, very new that we haven't seen a lot of people doing, which is completely closing their door doors with no plans to move it forward. Um, and reopen and now they're offering virtual classes directly to their consumers and I think therein lies a very interesting take so um, I've said this a couple times in various places I don't really remember um, what the what the uh, situation was but I said look if I were CrossFit if I were Eric Rosa I would I would double down on a trend of direct to, to consumer technology that brings fitness for CrossFit to the living room I'd build an app the CrossFit app, because I'm the only one who can do it. Well, you got the trademark, so congrats. <laughs> if I could, I'd do it. Um, and I would host live classes every day. You know how many seminar staff are out there? There's so many seminar staff in, in multiple languages across the globe. There's like 150 seminar staff or more that are like the best trainers in the world for CrossFit. And if you want to have a CrossFit app, great. That's fantastic. But guess what? There's a whole bunch of people whose gyms are closed. There's a whole bunch of people who are afraid to go into a gym. There's a whole bunch of people who feel like they're too fat to go into a gym. We all know this. We've seen them on a constant basis. We've, we've, we've met them if they, we've worked out next to them who told us their story. And we've written about them at Morning Chalk Up and CrossFit knows about them already. And there's a whole bunch of other people that just don't know how to get started, right? You know, the Greg Glassman was on to something back in the day when he brought out the couch. Now, his was a little kooky. And the way of going about doing it was a, was a little bit strange. But... Right now, more people are investing in their own personal fitness fr from technology and wearables than they've ever done before. So if I were thinking about what's the trend for the next several years of CrossFit or for training, let's just be more specific to training. I would say whoever is able to capitalize on in-living room fitness the best, the fastest, the hardest, and gets fourteen ninety-five per month and establishes a, a base of a half a million users is the company that wins. If it were me, this is what I would do because what I can tell you is that there's a whole bunch of actual CrossFitters who are out there who are going and joining Zoom classes on a regular basis with their affiliate. If that tells you one thing, it's that people will adapt. They will do digital digitized fitness and they will do that with a personal trainer who's there talking and walking them through the mechanisms and the components and encouraging them along the way with a plan to help them get fitter. If you've got that and you can deliver it to a phone or OTT, Congratulations, you just won the game. If he's serious about getting a million, you know, uh, not a million, um, like uh, growing his affiliation model and growing the uh, the um, the number of active CrossFitters to millions, to 10 million, to 20 million, that's what I would do.
So if you're a gym that's out there, I think San Francisco Cross provides a unique and interesting model that you might consider for yourselves. Brick and mortar is very expensive. We've known that for a long time. But um, if you got two or 300 members that are going to be willing to pay you a reduced rate because it's no longer, you know, not actually the same equipment and still work out in their garages, which more and more people today are transforming into gyms, your overhead, way down, profit, way up. It's basically a math equation. Um, just got to decide to pivot. doesn't mean it works for everybody and not everybody should do it, but um, yeah. it's certainly something we're seeing. And, and San Francisco, San Francisco is a good example. San Jose, you mean? San, sorry. Yeah. San Jose CrossFit, yes. Yeah, I think it's interesting though, man, because it's like how, I think we're in like this limbo spot, right? Where it's like, do you go all in yeah. and on the things that you're saying? Because what if we're back to some state of normal in February? I don't think we will be, but what if we are, right? So it's like a gamble. It's like, do you kind of wait this thing out? Do you kind of see what's going to happen over the next six months? I know we said that seven months ago, eight months ago. But it's like, when do you actually make the decision to like go all in one day? Especially for, especially, especially for- Fortune favors the bold, my friend. I can't give you the right answer to that. But what I can tell you is, is that you may fail, but you may succeed beyond what you, your expectations. It's risk mitigation. So you talk to a company like CrossFit, right? And they're like, Eric's like, hey dude, we're actually doing okay right now. You know what I mean? Our, yeah. our cash flow is not in any kind of pain. So it's like that risk mitigation is a lot. You have to pay attention to that a lot more than San Jose CrossFit where they're like, we can shut down or go online. Let's go online, right? Sure. Yeah. Every case is going to be super individualized when it comes to that. I would say in the terms of CrossFit, um, you know, they have a stated goal of wanting to double the amount of affiliates globally. They also have a stated goal of wanting half a million people doing the open and they have a stated goal of, uh, well, they don't have a stated goal in this one, but they do have a VC company behind them that didn't just throw its money into the, in, 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 uh, in order to get no return on investment. You know, if they're looking at a 5X multiple on $200 million that they, that, 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 uh, on $200 million for, for buying CrossFit, then, then they need a billion dollar company. They're not gonna get to a billion dollar company by writing the 10 year plan to double affiliation. I mean, so yeah, you're right. But um, you know, in, in, in 10 years, do they double affiliation? I don't know. They're at 14,100 right now from a high, they're down 1400 from a high water market, 15.5. So, you know, you, you do that net negative 1400 math and you add another, because they'd be on like 28,000 in 10 years. I don't know. Maybe they will. Um, I don't know. I can't even speak to it because I don't know what their plans are or aren't. But I know that that's a very large uphill battle because most of that growth has to happen overseas. I also know that they won't necessarily reach a big 1B by doing that because it's not necessarily going to correlate to, you know, it, it will be double the amount of affiliation revenue and it will be an increase in the amount of license, sorry, uh, uh, L1 training and certification levels. But, um, but I can tell you, you get some profitability better if you get 1495 from 500,000 people monthly. Yeah, it's interesting because maybe that does get CrossFit into the hands and the living rooms of more like clients yeah. and consumers, yeah. but it doesn't ultimately help the coaches and the gym owners. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. So there's a pocket of individuals that just isn't going to go to the gym that don't like group fitness, right? They may involve, they may, they may get in on the, the personal trainer aspect of your gym. So you may be taking away that personal training element. Um, but, um, and certainly somebody who's uncomfortable doing gym based environment training is going to be much more comfortable with the personal trainer, but the cost barrier is significantly higher. So you're already knocking out a ton of individuals that just won't pay $200 a month for personal training or more. And personal training can easily be two, three, four, and $500 a month, depending on what you're asking for and who you want to work with and, and what, and where you live too. Cause like New York city versus Anaheim, where I live. You know, it's relatively expensive, but it's certainly not New York City and it's not San Francisco or Omaha, Nebraska. And so the, the price tag is going to shift a lot. If you're only costing 20 or 30 or $40 a month, what you're talking about is a generally speaking individual who's not going to be doing that. But what you are going to be getting is somebody who is getting results from CrossFit. And what is CrossFit or functional training? One is the best marketing tool that they have. It's the body, the body telling their friends because they took their shirt off or because they just look better or because they're eating healthier and people ask them the question, Hey man, what's different? JLo looking shredded over there. You know, you, what's, what's with all that stuff you got going on? Oh man, I've been doing CrossFit. Really CrossFit? I thought all the gyms are closed. No, I've been doing it in my living room. Got this new app. 
you know, um, CrossFitters and, and, the, and the, the gym members, the gym members, the athletes have been the best marketing tool that has existed for all the owners that are out there. They're talking about it all the time. I mean, come on. We've been talking about it all the time. We're freaks. <laughs> like you can't go to a social media page from one of us and be like, yeah, that person definitely does CrossFit. And it's the best marketing tool we've had and allowing that to live and to thrive. And I think that more people doing it is a net benefit. I don't think those people, I think, I think the cost of getting that type of person that's going to use a fitness-based app into the gym is going to be very expensive and very difficult. doesn't mean it won't happen, but I don't think those people are gym goers. I don't think those people want to go to a gym and do group classes with other people. I think that's why they picked living room fitness. I think that's why they picked Peloton. You know that the person who can afford Peloton can afford a 24 hour membership, but for some reason they choose Peloton because they get to do it in their gym. They get to walk in their own personal gym. They get to walk right outside into their garage and they get to crank it for 30 minutes to an hour. And they get to do that and they get to measure their success against a whole bunch of their peers and figure out how badass they are. That's fantastic. That person can afford a $24 membership to 20, 24 hour fitness. And she said they choose a thousand dollar machine and a monthly fee. I don't think it hurts affiliates. I don't think they were going to get those people anyways. Yeah, I think it's, man, I think, especially right now, I think a, a lot of companies see a lot of opportunity to make an extra buck, right? In this instance, an extra 10 million bucks. Um, but it's like, and, you, and you're in it too, right? It's like, you have a company, you have to make decisions day over day, quarter over quarter. And it's like, what are we going to do, right? And there's probably right. something that comes to all of our minds. Where we're like, ooh, I can make a lot of cash doing this thing. But we take a step back and we're like, ooh, that doesn't align with what we do as a company at all, right? So, you know, I can kind of, I, I feel Eric's pain where it's like, and I know we keep talking about CrossFit, but it's, it's relevant, but it's, it's relevant to it's all companies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but, you know, he came out and he said, you know, affiliates first, right? I think he said something like that. Yeah. So if they were to like, you know, pivot and say, we're going after your members, right? I could see where the affiliates you know, would I like. Can see, I can see it in selling, it's going to be challenging, but at the same time, I don't, I just don't buy that you're stealing, you're really stealing membership out there. Like they've had 10 years to go grab that person. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if, I wouldn't do this like in a public discourse, but like if I was having a one-to-one -one conversation with somebody who's like, you're stealing my members. I was like, what were you doing for the last decade? How come they're not in your gym? I'm not stealing anybody from you. They weren't going to show up anyways, or you didn't do a good enough job marketing them. So I've already given you a decade heads up, a uh, decade's time. And now it's time to pivot and figure out how we're going to deliver more CrossFit to more people. Ultimately, more people doing CrossFit is a net benefit. I don't, I, I think that when people were going to leave, they were going to leave during COVID and they're saying, you know, just, 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 I'm only in for group fitness. I think the people there love group fitness. They're there. They honestly, you come for CrossFit, you stay for family, right? You come for the workout, you stay for the, the community. And that's something we've been saying for a long time. And that's something gym owners have been saying for a long time. So they got the community-based people. The fun, remember, remember, remember in the back in the day when we got the, you know, the fire breathers concept, I was a fire breather person. You know, I came in, I was like, I just want to get smashed in the face by a truck. Like, that's why I'm here. And you're like, okay. So if you're going to go from a, if you're going to graduate from the 80 or so crazy people that join your gym, right? Greg used to talk about this. It's like, you're your 75, you open a gym. You're like, we're going to give you the, you just got to actually smash you in the face this workout. You're going to be lying on the floor, just, just demolished. You know, you used to get 75 people to join. They're like, I want to get demolished. Well, to get from 75 to 150, you're going to now have to accept some people that are like not crazy. You're going to have to start, you know, maybe adjusting your coaching style so you're not screaming in their face being like just keep going you just do it yes, come on you know like you know you you've got those people you could do that with but like you're you know, your everyday crossfitters like dude bro like <laughs> bump the brakes and so you have to adjust your coaching style and and the, the clientele that you're going and if you want to go from 150 to 300 you got to go to the mall and you got to see some people that don't look good naked greg used to talk about this all the time it's like if you want to go from 150 to three guess what obese the underserved population so ones who don't even walk into gyms anymore now you're fighting over people that don't go to gyms they don't want to be in a gym and you need to convince them that by going into a gym they're gonna have a better life a healthier life more functional life they can pick things up they can play with their kids they can do all of the fun things that they hoped they thought they could do but they can't do it anymore right so so like i just don't buy that after 10 years, then all of a sudden they, they, you know, they, they cry foul because CrossFit as an organization, if they built the app direct to consumers, stealing their people, 
it could happen. Maybe the ones and twos, but they had a shot for like a decade to pick them up, to pick pick up the mall mom, and they didn't do it. 